Our expectations are rather significant to any show or movie, as we usually want the project to end on a high note or to aim for something original. For me, it takes a day or two to decide how engrossed I am on the topic and theme of the production. However, it is rare when it takes a few weeks to fully wrap my head around a conclusion of a film or show. The season 3 finale of Twin Peaks has successfully made me dive into confusion, that has been resolving into a satisfaction I haven't experienced before. Let's discuss the last two episodes of the season and how it concludes the Twin Peaks storyline. To keep this video from being too extensive, I'll be going over Dale Cooper's storyline only. If you'd like me to discuss my thoughts on the other concluding storylines, or in a simpler term, cliffhangers, let me know in the comments section below. I'm still trying to figure out what Audrey's subplot had to do with everything else. I also want to note that the ideas I will be discussing are my interpretations of the story's conclusion. I believe Lynch and Frost intended us to mold our own perception of each storyline's ending. So let's begin. I am the old Tin Man and if you're new to these analysis videos, subscribe to keep an eye out for more Twin Peaks material. Make sure to click the bell notification to stay notified when a new video is releasing. So let's first start out in the projection room, where the fireman has been happily floating around since episode 8. In part 17, we see Mr. C arriving in the woods where Andy, Hawk, Bobby, and Sheriff Truman found Naido, the eyeless woman. Mr. C is transported into the projection room from here, where he looks to be in some sort of protection cage that would eventually transport him in front of the sheriff's station. I believe that Mr. C has been securing himself ever since he arrived in Twin Peaks 25 years ago. He was able to successfully find a way to make his presence on the world guarded from anything that can take him off. Let's say that Mr. C formed separate dimensions that held vaguely similar attributes to the original reality that he was replicating to throw off any intruders or visitors. Ducky Jones, Diane, and perhaps many other manufactured bodies was a part of his watermark for these dimensions, so he can manipulate the timeline in the way he wanted. He would hide in one of these parallel dimensions to escape anyone pursuing him, and the moment he entered the projection room, it would be the reality in which Cooper resides. That would explain why he didn't go into a linear path to the sheriff's station in the reality he was currently in. It is in this reality where he could only find Naido, which might have been the only way for him to truly stop Dale Cooper in his tracks and successively change his future. My perception of the projection room is that it's an entryway to other dimensions that have been built to the planet Earth, and the slideshow in the Mr. C transporting scene displays these separate realities. You might question why Mr. C has seen characters from other storylines then, such as Richard Horn and Phyllis Hastings. Like I said before, I assume Mr. C has built very similar realities that were identical to the other dimensions that carried these storylines. So most events would execute in a similar order with indistinguishable characters in one reality, like it would in another. Although some characters he didn't replicate, such as himself, Naido, and Dale Cooper, because they all came from a reality unrelated to these dimensions on Earth. Plus, he didn't want multiple Dale Coopers chasing him in the end. It is also unsure if the dimension that Dale Cooper is in at this time is the original reality in which the first two seasons took place. As we have seen unusual circumstances take place here, such as the sudden darkness that reaches the sheriff's office near the end of part 17. Mr. C could have planted a trap that would transport Cooper into this manufactured reality that would make his actions null. But of course, there is no real proof of this, almost like everything else predicted this season. Now let's talk about the eyeless woman. As being the host of the real Diane, she intended to be in Twin Peaks to greet Dale in hopes that he could save Diane from her confinement in which Mr. C trapped her in. Somehow Diane has a connection to Cooper in which they both pursued Blue Rose cases in a special secret kind of way, almost like the Scooby-Doo gang. In this circumstance, they have the power to travel through time and space. Diane was the key to Dale accomplishing his true goal, to change the past and save Laura Palmer from death. The unclear goal that Cooper was venturing to do this whole season, besides stopping psychopathic Mr. C. For 25 years, it seems Dale was planning on the execution of this plan after he escaped the lodge, but he expected his doppelganger to return to take his place and give him a pat on the back. Although when his doppelganger didn't care about his compassion to save anyone, it caused Mr. C to be his new priority before his true goal. Thankfully, he was able to accomplish this goal and change the past, by pushing Laura away from the demise that awaited her. Let's move on to the timeline of this season. There are subtle hints that the timeline is disorderly this season, which could change everything. One example is in part 12. We see Dougie Cooper attempting to play catch with his son, Sonny Jim. But in the next episode, Janie E questions Dougie's absence for the past few days. 
At this moment, in part 13, the last Janie E. solved Dougie was before he met the Mitchum brothers back in part 11, two episodes prior. This presents the idea that the timeline isn't running parallel with the show's episodes, since Dougie wouldn't be home for target practice if he was missing with the Mitchum brothers during that time. Although what does this mean exactly? In the last episode, we find Mr. C returning back to his fiery hell in the Red Room, due to Dale's heroic ring placing skill. We are then presented with a strange and unusual return back to the Red Room, after attempting to save Laura for the first time. During this moment, Cooper is either unsure of what caused Laura's disappearance or lost memory of the rescue. Either way, he still has the same objective, to save Laura from danger. Diane and Cooper enter a portal into a different dimension that changes their identities to Richard and Linda. Cooper then finds Laura and brings her back to the slightly changed Twin Peaks, where nobody knows anything about the Palmer family. Even Laura doesn't know who Laura is. At the Palmer house, she screams, just like she did when she disappeared for the first time. In my opinion, I believe Cooper is in a constant loop in separate dimensions, where he must attempt to save Laura Palmer every time the loop resets. Each loop would have a different route in the rescue, but the same outcome. If you remember back to the first scene of the season, where the fireman was explaining what Cooper must do once he returns back to the world, he was told to listen to the sounds. The sound playing on the phonograph is the same sound that played once Laura disappeared, followed by Cooper stopping in his tracks. This sound might have somehow brainwashed Cooper that resets and clears his mind to the last time that he heard that sound. When he heard that unusual sound, he lost all memory of the entire season, in which he was directed back to the lodge to take a different direction to save Laura. I like to think that the first time we hear that noise is also the initial time that Dale hears it as well. I don't like the notion that the whole season was a dream of Dale's, given the illusion that none of the events actually occurred. I would rather imagine that the first rescue did save Laura's life, and in turn sacrificed Cooper's mental state, which started to loop into separate dimensions. When Cooper does see that Laura is alive, but instead named Carrie Page, that might prove that Laura in fact did survive in the original reality. Carrie Page would be her true identity in this dimension, but with similar traits and of course body. Sarah and Leland Palmer would still be her actual parents, but with a different identity as well, along with everyone else in the series. To save the life of another, he must make the sacrifice, which I believe he understood, since he did say he understood to the giant in the first scene of the season. It is the fireman that does present him with this unusual sound in the first place, perhaps showing that a deal was made between Cooper and the giant. In the end, I believe Lynch intended to conclude the story of Twin Peaks here, showing that the past changed the future. Perhaps this is why we didn't see a conclusion to the other plots, because they wouldn't be the same now that Laura is alive. This might also explain why the timeline is disorderly, as Cooper was intended to successfully save Laura, which caused the timeline to transition into the reality in which Laura is alive. There would be no need to return to a plot where Agent Dale Cooper never entered Twin Peaks, a series of events that changed the rural town over a 25 year span. The finale of Twin Peaks Season 3 is extremely complicating, but I feel like I should have been expecting this, as Lynch is just being Lynch. It seems this conclusion was the original idea for the series 25 years ago, but was successfully executed this time around. This gave me and many others an extremely unique and satisfying way to end a fascinating show. What do you guys think happened in the finale? Would you guys define this as a good ending or a bad one? I know I missed a lot of key information in the final episodes of the season, but I'm still hashing out all the details and might make another video on the finale. Let me know if that interests you. I appreciate everyone for watching this analysis. If you want to join our community and see future analysis content on Twin Peaks and many other shows, click the subscribe rectangle below the video. What do you want to see me analyze next? Thank you again, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you.